June 17, 2011, 15 years before the Procton's arrival. Ballistic Resistance Test 1 for Subject 17B, Weapon Caliber 6.62, Distance to be fired from 50 yards, Area of Subject Targeted, Head. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I objected to the man in the lab coat. Hold on just a minute. You did not tell me you'd be shooting me in the goddamn head today. We're behind schedule, Victor. He retorted. Besides, we've already completed bone and flesh density scans. This bullet shouldn't be any more painful than someone throwing a marshmallow at your head. Easy to be relaxed when you're not the one volunteering your skull to a bullet. I sighed. But if it's gotta get done, then it's gotta get done. Just hurry up and get it over with. I said before straightening my posture, now staring down the man who raised the rifle he held up toward my head. He smirked as he stared down the barrel, almost like he was amused at my agitation. I closed my eyes as he squeezed the trigger, took the shot, and the bang erupted. That alone told me I knew I was still alive, because as they say, you never hear the bullet that kills you. I opened my eyes, and on the floor below was the crushed bullet, as if something had attempted to squeeze it inwards from both ends. I reached up and placed my finger on the small spot on my forehead where it had impacted. Once I brought it back down and saw that there was no blood on it, I officially knew I was bulletproof. An odd but simultaneously awesome revelation. The scientist then ordered the sniper to fire two more rounds at me, one in the chest and one at my shoulder, both of which ended in the same result as the first. I barely even felt the impact of the bullets hitting me. And while I'm sure that this wasn't the true limit of my newly given superhuman durability, it sure did reassure me that I'd never have to worry about being shot again. After the ballistic resistance test had been completed, they then put me through a temperature endurance trial, the first of which was heat. Let's just say that being told to sit inside of a specialized furnace that can heat up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit makes you reconsider the decisions you made leading up to that. But hey, I signed up for this after all. I'm not really sure how to put this, but it was completely comfortable. It felt no different than any other space at room temperature. I stayed in there for several minutes and suffered not even a single burn or a bit of pain. After that, I was treated to stepping inside a cooling chamber that was able to drop just 5 degrees above absolute zero. But again, I felt fine, as if someone had turned on the AC. These new abilities were surreal, and the implications of having this level of power were somewhat scary. I considered myself a reasonable person, but what if something happened? Like I lost my cool for just a second at the wrong moment, and someone died. I could only hope that from now on, until my death, I handled this great power with great responsibility. Present Day What's the biggest monster you fought, Mr. Rubble? Came Eva as she bit into an apple. We all sat gathered around the fireplace in the hotel lounge. I smiled at Eva before swallowing a bite of food in order to answer her question. Took down a huge scary sea monster once. He was bigger than a whale, much bigger, and he kicked my butt pretty good. But eventually, I got back up and took him down, but not before he knocked out a few teeth. Eva perked up upon my response, excitedly sitting up in her chair and nearly knocking her paper plate with her foot off of her lap. What about you, laser lady? What's the biggest monster you fought? She grilled enthusiastically after whipping her head around to face Sindris. Well, Sindris said, sitting up and resting her fork on her plate. She leaned forward with a dramatic look. Eva eyed her with great anticipation, much to Daniel's amusement. There was this giant worm monster. It would crawl on the ground in the sewers. She went on, before being swiftly cut off by Eva. Ew, worms and the sewers? I hate both of those. A lot. So gross. I know, right? Sindris replied with an agreeing nod. But anyways, this big worm would crawl around in the sewers, and it would come up sometime and snatch up little boys and girls like you. So I took it down, blasted it with these. 
She smiled before raising her arms and allowing them to begin glowing their sapphire shade, much to Ava's excitement. Awesome, she shouted before taking another bite of her meal. Your arm colors are so pretty. Well, thank you. While we're on the topic, Victor, did you, did you grow some of your teeth back in the past few hours? Asked Rosita. Is that one of your powers? Without answering the question verbally, Sindris and I shared a glance, both of us smirking at one another. Now seemed like a time as good as any to reveal what we knew about Ava. What? Daniel and Rosita asked simultaneously. Both of them looked over at us with confusion and intrigue. Is there something we're missing? Rosita grilled. We think that Ava has abilities. Special abilities. I declared. Both Daniel and Rosita's eyes widened as they stared back at us. I could hear both of their heartbeats increase in speed, but Rosita relaxed her expression after a few seconds, it instead morphing into skepticism over shock. I think maybe you're both misreading some things. I haven't seen her show any signs of- Oh my god! Oh my god! Powers? Do I have powers? Please! Please! I want powers! Ava blurted, cutting Rosita off. Miss, Sindris began, addressing Rosita. When the three of us were walking down that sewer tunnel, and you started to feel shh, I mean, not so good. You looked pretty sickly, like the color was draining from you. But as soon as Ava hooked you, your pigmentation returned to normal. You looked way better, and seems like you were more energetic. I do have super healing, ma'am, I added. But growing completely new teeth back is something that would take days, even for me. Not an hour. Drove and broke some of my ribs and nearly cracked my sternum, and it would take me at least several hours to heal from something like that. Your daughter has a gift. I'm not saying I don't believe you. Daniel interjected. But this is coming as a shock to all of us. In her childhood, we never noticed any, well, special developments. Well, was there any point you three were separated while you were being held by the Proctons? Well, they did come to take. Daniel began, before just like Rosita, he was cut off by his daughter. They took me to a bedroom and gave me shots, like at the doctor. They hurt, Eva exclaimed. Sindris and I exchanged another glance, one of complete mutual understanding and intention. Sweetheart, came Sindris. Did you see what was in those shots they gave you? Just a weird green water, it looked like slime. You didn't tell us they injected you with something? Rosita erupted. Are you okay, princess? Is there anything else? Anything else at all they did to you that you haven't told us? You could be hurt or poisoned. Rosita then embraced Ava in a tight, maternal hug. Daniel joined in, attempting to comfort the both of them. We're just glad you're alright, princess. That's all that matters. I feel okay, I promise. Ava pleaded with her parents. Sindris and I quietly agreed that it would be best for us to let them have the room, so as not to interrupt their moment together. She planned on going out to search for more food and supplies. The both of us headed for the window inside the room I was laying down in earlier. Sindris peered her head out, while I listened out for anything out of the ordinary. Ultimately, I decided I was gonna hang back and keep an eye on the family in case something happened. Sindris flew out and then hovered in the air just a few feet outside the window, looking down at me as we locked eyes. I shouldn't be gone longer than a couple of hours. Just keep them safe. I'll make sure I don't come back empty-handed. Watch your back out there. Jovan's still alive, and now completely under that shithead Cawthorn's control. If you see them, keep your distance, and don't let them see you come back here. Last thing we need is you down for the count. I will. Don't worry. She smiled. Take care of them and yourself, Victor. Will do. I nodded. After she had taken off, I heard some light footsteps approach me from behind, ones that were accompanied by a faint heartbeat. I turned, finding Rosita and Daniel both standing there with their arms crossed, looking at me. We believe you, about Ava. Daniel spoke up before I could. I know we were a bit, uh... Well, skeptical back there. Just kind of a hard thing to immediately accept. You're not stupid, 
you guys just got done spending months being locked up and prepped to be used as guinea pigs by the aliens. I'm sure it wasn't the first thing on your minds. Sindris told us that your brother passed away. We wanted to offer our condolences. What was his name, if that's okay to ask? Said Rosita. Sean, he was an EMT. Saved more lives than I ever could. Well, may Sean rest in peace. Daniel declared with a respectful nod. Thank you. That means a lot, really. We don't mean to pry. Just figured it would be nice to get to know you as all. Get to know Victor, not Rubble, he added. Well, enough about me. What did you two do before all this? Accountant, Rosita said with a hand raised shyly. A few different things, but my most recent gig was delivery driver. Daniel chimed in. Decent pay? Actually, yeah, wasn't too bad. Boss ended up giving me a bonus a few months before all this started. Took these two on vacation. Hey, awesome. Where to? A little beach over down in the ha- Daniel was cut off abruptly and without warning as I felt a powerful force collide into my back. Powerful enough to throw me forward with a great speed and slamming right into both Daniel and through the wall behind him. I crashed through pipes and drywall, unable to get a hold of my bearings until seconds after the fact. Ava, run! Now! Right now! I heard Rosita shout. It was only after I pushed a large slab of drywall off of my back that I heard the sound of a repetitive whirring, as well as several heartbeats. The Proctons, they had found us. My focus on them quickly faded when I looked down, and my expression from confusion and haste shifted into horror. I could feel my heart almost stop, and all the color drained from my face as my blood-covered hands began to twitch. No, 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 no! I shouted, looking down at my forearms, almost smothered in blood, a lot of which dripped down, down onto the mangled corpse of Daniel. His body sustained wounds that made him nearly unrecognizable. Seeing Procton corpses was one thing, but this was another far more terrible sight. My mouth involuntarily gaped as I held my hands up. My chest and stomach were covered with bits of gore. Whatever had thrown me forward, likely a Procton blaster, had done it with enough force to make me crush him into a mutilated mess. There was no heartbeat coming from him anymore, and he definitely died on impact. Which was for the better, if there was no need for him to suffer. But still, it was no less horrifying to see what was left of him right there, in front of me. Yet another death on my hands that I was powerless to stop. Shit. Fucking shit. I cursed and swore, using my sleeves to wipe the blood off of my face after I heard the terrified screams of Rosita and Ava. Screams that were much more along the lines of them fearing for their lives rather than being grief-stricken. They hadn't seen what happened to Daniel, but at some point, the truth would have to be told, and it was going to be a conversation no one was ready for. I had to force myself to move. Rosita and Ava's lives were in danger, and despite what I had just witnessed, I needed to make sure they did not succumb to a similar fate. I could hear them on the floor below. I flew downward through the floor so fast and stopped so suddenly that the blood on my body had been whisked away. Rosita and Ava screamed as I impacted just in front of them. The dust of concrete and drywall kicked up around us as the hard stairs cracked beneath my feet. And in the distance, I could hear repetitive metal clanking coming up the very same stairs. Ava burst into tears out of sheer fear. Rosita held her tight in an attempt to comfort her, despite the fact that I could hear her heart beating just as rapidly as her daughter's. Without any further hesitation, I kicked a section of the wall, my foot bursting through the drywall and cement, hollowing it out and making a hole big enough for the three of us to escape out of. The metal clanking and other heartbeats moved closer, and they were almost at our level on the stairwell. I grabbed Rosita and Ava, picked them up and flew them out of the hole and through an alleyway between two buildings, narrowly avoiding the structures. My flight speed had to be kept limited unless I wanted them to end up being burned to a crisp by the air compression while flying beyond hypersonic speeds. 
Even with Ava's healing abilities, I was unsure if she and her mother would be able to bounce back from such a grisly injury. But I didn't make it far. Before I was thrown off course by a laser blast right in my leg. I tumbled through the air, still holding onto Ava and Rosita as I attempted to regain control of my momentum. And I almost didn't in time, but in the split second before we collided with the ground, I turned myself so I was facing up at the sky while holding the two above me, my back sliding along the asphalt of the street and tearing it up, leaving the both of them unharmed. I came to a stop and both of them moved out of my grasp as I got back to my feet, the dust of the broken asphalt falling off my back and shoulders. Look out! Ava screamed. I peered to where she pointed and laid eyes on a Procton some 60 yards away, preparing to shoot us with his blaster, indicated by him having it raised to his shoulder. My hearing didn't pick him up in the chaos, but it didn't matter. I closed the distance between him and me in a fraction of a second, long before he was able to fire off a shot. The uppercut I delivered to stop him from doing so sent him well above the clouds. Five more Proctons emerged from an alleyway. I wasted no time flying toward them. I grabbed the closest one by the legs, snatching him up right where he stood and slamming him into the other four as if he were a baseball bat, knocking them all into the third floor of an adjacent building. Just as I went to further pummel the Procton soldier in my hand, I myself was hit so hard that I was thrown across the street and into what used to be a pet store, smashing through the front window and into the office. Fearing for Ava and Rosita's mortality, I immediately flew back out, only to be hit again the moment I crossed the threshold between the sidewalk and the broken window. Down the road I went for several yards before crashing into a news van. A dent in the middle formed so deep that it threatened to split the vehicle in half. I frantically peered forward, laying eyes on Joven who hovered a few feet off the ground. His eyes and expression had been completely trained of any expressive emotion as he floated there with his arms crossed. Several yards behind them were Rosita and Ava, surrounded by a group of four Proctons, all holding their blasters just inches from their heads. And between both the group and Droven was Commander Carthon, suited up and holding two sonic grenades. Do not move any further, he snarled. If you fly so much as an inch closer, she dies, he said, nodding at Rosita. And you may be fast enough to prevent it, but I am aware it's far too large of a risk to take for you. I have grown tired of your antics, and I have come with a proposal that should satisfy both your needs and mine. Go fuck yours, I growled, only to be cut off by my own paint yelling as Carthon activated both sonic grenades. I cupped both hands over my ears, the vibrations rattling my head and skull. But surprisingly enough, it wasn't quite as bad as before Ava had healed me. Perhaps her powers were somehow able to increase my resistance to sonic attacks. The grenades suddenly ceased, both being deactivated by Carthon. He focused on me, an annoyed expression forming. You are a powerful specimen, Victor. That much is obvious. And this back and forth of continuous slaughter and destruction will continue endlessly at this rate. He paused. You have something that belongs to us. A resource far more valuable than any weapon. He went on, nodding over to Ava. Give us the girl, and we will allow you, her mother, and Sindris to go free. So long as you do not interfere with our operations any longer. Honor these terms and I will ensure that my soldiers do you no further harm or create you no more hardship from this day forward. Otherwise, they will die, and we will continue this mindless war between one another. You bunch of ugly stupid aliens! Ava shouted, teary-eyed. Where is my husband? Rosita snarled at the Procton soldier just to her right, disregarding the blaster pointed directly at her temple. Speaking of, Carthon interjected not acknowledging either of them. Her father can still be salvaged, but once his corpse begin to reach advanced rot, even her abilities won't be able to reverse the damage. I'd make your decision with haste. What? What does that even mean? Victor? Rosita cried out, desperately glaring at me with an expression that screamed she was desperate for answers, and rightfully so. 
I wasn't going to hand Ava over to the Procton's. Never. But if there was a way I could save her father, I needed to try. I needed to deceive them. Make them believe I fully intended to agree to these absurd and idiotic terms. Carthon was correct in saying that I wasn't ready to take the risk of crossing the distance and disarming the Proctons surrounding Ava and her mother in time before their blasters activated, but only because Droven was right there, and he'd likely be able to stop or impede me along the way. Even if I was a bit faster than him, the slightest obstacle in that regard would mean both Ava's and Rosita's death. I could only hope that Sindris would return soon. I need her help now more than ever before. Carthon began to appear impatient. Eva and Rosita both swore and hurled insults at him and the other Procton soldiers as he fully kept his attention on me. So, he began, what will it be? Victor. Victor.